This work took place on Sunday, uh, January 8th, 2023, and I did record my usual preamble, but I watched it, and man, it goes on forever, and everything that I talked about actually happens right here. Um, I reconfigured the bending brake to close up the little gap that I had intentionally left between the hinges, worried that I would create like a paper-thin crease if I let those pieces sit flush. I just wasn't able to get the amount of bend that I needed um, at the crease. You can see me working on the right elevator here um, after reconfiguring it. And you can also see when I put that root, uh, that rib in there that now it actually fits quite nicely. In a moment here, I'll get into a more detailed explanation of that. So now that I got the bend right, um, putting the skeleton back together, fitting it again, making sure that I like it. Uh, this video is all about bending. I'm gonna post a little time card right here to tell you where you can go if you want to see bending happening in real time. Um, at the end of the video, I go ahead and work on the left elevator. Here I'm just checking uh, to see how well the uh, bend turned out, and it turned out pretty good. I removed um, this bending brake, and I told you before that I had a gap uh, here between these two, so when they closed, it would maintain a gap in here. The gap between the two boards is about a quarter inch when it was closed all the way. A quarter inch gap at the hinge, of course, you could still go all the way forward and get it there, but it's hard to get any leverage out there. So you can tell that I basically just disassembled it really quickly, refastened the, um, the hinges so that this is flush, and then uh, cranked on it a little bit and really, really reduced the uh, uh, the amount of the amount of space between the skin and uh, the root rib in particular, but anyways, I think it's bent pretty well. I mean, at this point, it very narrowly it's it's like maybe less than an inch off of the end rib and even closer on the root rib down there. It's hard to tell, you know, necessarily if that is an identical angle, only because this end down here is longer, so it has more weight, kind of folding it over, like gravity wise. So I've reassembled it to, to check the bend. Everything seems to line up well. It, it's not difficult to clico together. There are, are a few holes that you have kind of have to line up towards the corners here. But other than that, um, the next thing to check is if it is overbent or underbent or properly bent or however you want to say. So what you're looking for is a straight a level plane from here to here that is not bulging, nor is it concave. Uh, when I look at it, where did I put my ruler? When I look at it with a straight edge, which is around here somewhere, Oh, so in terms of ensuring that I didn't over squeeze the actual crease right here, I did use this steel rod and I had it threaded all the way through there. And I just used a little bit of uh, butyl tape on the corners here to make sure that it stayed secure against the back. And that seemed to help. So looking at this uh, with a, a straight edge, really going from the, the spar here back to the trailing edge, I think it's pretty good. There are a couple spots where this is not the most reliable straight edge because it's a floppy ruler, but uh, there are a couple spots where there's a little bit of a gap underneath um, underneath the ruler there. Um, this can be adjusted, like fine-tuned later. If it's overbent or underbent, it can be fine-tuned um, by using a little wood block 
and uh, sort of tapping along here either to uh, unbend it a little bit or using a hand seamer or something like that, apply something with jaws applied to a wood block and you can squeeze it down a little bit more. I'm, I think it's pretty good. I know it can be fine tuned. So I think that it's okay to carry on from here. There's a, a few more um, uh, other than just edge finishing and deburring, there's a little bit more work that needs to be done right up here where this, um, this piece right here that holds the counterweight and then th this thing holds a counterweight but it's also the attach point for the fiberglass, fiberglass tip of the elevator. This is the outboard edge of the elevator and there's a fiberglass tip that goes on here. So where this, where these two pieces meet, this little portion right here, these edges have to be beveled so that it creates a smoother transition from, from this up to. So I had to figure that out. Anyways, I'll start working on that right now. Now that I've confirmed that the bend is indeed good, it's time to take this whole assembly apart again so that I can prep the parts for priming and final assembly. At the end of the table there, you see that um, counterweight attach strap um, skin, and that's what I'm working on here. You end up with three layers thick um, between skins, this um, attach skin, and then, or the, the counterweight attached skin, and then the fiberglass itself. So you need to bevel the corner of that just to create a smooth transition. Uh, once that was done, uh, then I start working on edge finishing and deburring the rest of the parts of the skeleton. Um, dimpling note, um, or sorry, I, was, I have a little die grinder with a scotch Brite wheel on it to get into smaller spaces and just a little bit easier for edge finishing on long pieces that are maybe awkward on the big scotch Brite wheel. Um, <laughs> you see me over there looking at Vans Air Force, uh, trying to figure out uh, some sort of problem that I'm encountering um, or some confusion with the plans. Uh, but once this is all done and these parts are ready to go, um, I find myself with a little bit of time left. So I get into the, um, get into the bending of the left elevator. But um, if nothing else, you can see that uh, parts prep, edge finishing, deburring, all of that is a long, uh, tedious task. This is sped up 50 times, so not a lot of parts here, but probably a good 60 minutes to 90 minutes of work just on this little handful of parts. And that's just the edge finishing. Then comes the um, scuffing. Uh, which you see me doing there, uh, scuffing the parts. Uh, <laughs> actually, uh, I went over the drill press. I have another little, like a two inch Scotch Brite wheel that I can put on the drill press, which will help, especially uh, next week when I get started on the wings. Uh, all of those ribs, and there are a lot of them, have lightning holes in them um, that, um, that the Scotch Brite wheel that's on the drill press will be really handy to do the edge finishing inside of those little circles. Uh, so I don't, you know, I haven't talked really, I don't think in great detail <clears throat> about the edge finishing and the prep work, but, um, it is a big part of the job. I've decided because I do live close to the Gulf, uh, that maybe priming into internal parts is a good idea. So, uh, that will kind of wrap it up for this portion of the program. Next up is a real time view of bending. So you can see what that really involves. Here you go. I just finished, um, cleaning up the parts that I'm going to, uh, prime for the right elevator and decided since I've already got the brake mounted here, to go ahead and uh, do the bend on the left elevator since the stiffeners have already been uh, riveted on. So why not? This bending process still freaks me out a little bit, but it is what it is, I guess.
Well, that is bent for sure. And I think that this is really close enough for government work. For now. It does appear that this end here is squeezing tighter than it is down here. Well, there's nothing in there to convince me that that's what's happening. But
Hmm. Kind of want to put this together to see what the actual quality of that bend is.